In today's project, we're delving into the world of home automation and Internet of Things. This lamp is Wi-Fi connected and can be controlled by an app made just for this project. Here we can select different color modes, fade between RGB colors and set timers. As a bonus, the project was made with an open message protocol. Now this means it can also be controlled by home automation applications or you can connect it to Alexa or Google Assistant. When all the parts come together, it will all work something like this. Hey Google, turn on work lights. Turning on work lights. The project consists mainly of four different parts. First is the circuit. This has five different LED channels, both RGB and cold and warm lights. It also has a Wi-Fi connected microcontroller. And on this, we put some code. This will activate a Wi-Fi server on the microcontroller and handle incoming requests and dim the LEDs accordingly. We will also need a remote for this project, like either the app or Google Assistant. And finally, some 3D printing. We can bring all the parts together in one smooth looking case. First, let's take a look at the circuit. I ordered this printed circuit board from JLC PCB, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. They are a site where you can order custom PCBs for as low as $2 for 10 units. As I work in a startup company, services like this come in extremely handy. The boards came out really good and they are designed to have two distinct parts, the control board and the LED board. These will later be connected by a flexible wire. When soldering SMB parts, I like to put down a blob of solder on one pad and position the part while this is still molten. Then it's just a matter of uh, dabbing the other pads with a bit of solder and everything should flow into place. Now, however, this LED board has close to 100 parts, which can get a bit tedious. So I recommend picking up some liquid solder flux. Using this on parts with more than a couple of pins makes it so much easier to solder. It almost feels like cheating. With all the LEDs and resistors in place, it's time to test the circuit to see if everything is soldered correctly. It has three LEDs in series with the resistor and this is repeated in parallel. They all share a common anode and five channels to sync to ground depending on what color you want to set. This will all be done a thousand times a second by the microcontroller through a MOSFET for each of the LED channels. The control circuit consists of five of these MOSFETs, matching gate source resistors and a voltage regulator along with the Vimos D1 Mini, which is the Wi-Fi connected microcontroller. This part of the circuit could certainly be made with through-hole components. I just wanted to use SMD parts where I could to keep everything slim enough to be mounted inside the lamp case. I'm soldering these headers on the top side instead of the bottom side of the PCB. This lets us cut away unused length of headers, which in turn keeps the circuit as slim as possible. While testing this circuit, everything worked great, except I realized there was one pin I had forgotten to connect to ground. But don't worry, this has been fixed in the uploaded Gerber files. Now let's take a look at what happens on the microcontroller side of things. To get this up and running on your network, you need to change the Wi-Fi settings. This includes router name and password, as well as settings for keeping a static IP address. Go into the command window on your computer and type ipconfig. This gives the information you need to change in the Arduino code. I chose a random IP address on my network and pinged it to see if it was available. If there's no reply, that means the address is currently available and it can be used on the microcontroller. So what happens in this code is the ESP8266 starts as a Wi-Fi server and a UDP client. Now the UDP client is used for keeping the time for timers and the Wi-Fi server is used for handling incoming requests. Depending on what the request is, it will act accordingly, like setting the correct LED brightness. After altering these settings, the control board can be connected to USB and the final code uploaded. The serial terminal displays a successful internet connection and the current time it gets from the network time server. It will also display information when a client makes a new request, like a web browser or the app. By visiting the local IP address, you can also see the simple website hosted on the microcontroller. It contains a few pieces of useful information and came in extremely handy while debugging the project. 
So now we have all of our circuitry and like any good electronics project we need to make a case. This one was designed in Fusion 360 and I went with sort of a sleek and simple looking design which has a modern feel to it. The round pegs are for mating with the holes on the circuit board and you can download this 3D file both with and without printing support for these pegs. It was 3D printed in a nice clean white color and it took about 4 hours on a resolution of 0.3 millimeters and 5% infill. After cutting off the peg support, the LED board can be simply put into its place where it lays flat against the casing. The microcontroller is flipped and secured in place with a piece of tape. This is to ensure it doesn't come loose while mounting to the wall. There's the channel for the power cables, where the cables go into their own separate channels and are tied together. The nut gives strain relief if something were to pull on the cables. After the cables are tied together, they can be soldered to the control board. Finally, we need a way to control all of this. One of several ways is to use the app made for this project. Here you can choose whether you want to control just RGB lights or RGB plus warm and cold white lights. Here you also set up the same IP address as is used on the microcontroller. This will be used by the app to make connections to the microcontroller. This app sends a command each time a button is pressed, which is in turn interpreted by the microcontroller. While you can set the color right away, you can also save four different timers to the lamp itself. This timer will turn on the blue lights in one minute. But this is not the only way to control the lights. Because the Arduino code is built with an open message protocol, this Internet of Things lamp can be controlled by any device capable of sending an HTTP request. This of course can be done by any browser on a computer or a phone, or you can write your own program. I also set up Tasker on Android to flash the lights whenever I receive a notification, as well as automatically turn on the lights when I get home. You can really go as deep into home automation as you want, and I know I'm just getting started. If you want to look at all the details around accepted messages and commands, take a look in the video description. And with all these parts complete, it's finally time to hang the lamp on the wall. I just mounted it with some double sided tape, which holds it nicely in place. With the way the light panel is angled, the light is distributed nicely in the room. Now with the lamp in its place and ready to accept commands, this means the project is done. You can find downloadable files, detailed instructions and all parts used in this build in the video description. Thanks for watching. As always, leave a like, comment and subscribe for more DIY tutorials coming your way.